Well, Dr. Gerard Verdun is a toxicologist, jo joins us now. Dr. Verdun, good evening to you. Thank you so much for your time. You know, d despite the fact that we had this update today, there seem to be really more questions than answers about what it is that killed these young people. What do you make of what the authorities have told us they have found based on those toxicology reports? Yeah, well, very interesting that they found methanol in the children's blood. Um, and also interesting that they ruled out carbon monoxide. Now, having spoken to a fellow colleague of mine this afternoon and looking at all the media reports, I tend to concur with the authorities that it doesn't seem to be carbon monoxide because if it was an acute carbon monoxide poison, the children would have all been lying on one spot. And apparently, according to all the reports I've received, they were scattered all over the place. It doesn't mean that there wasn't some sort of oxygen deprivation, which I still believe is one of the possible contributing mechanisms. And we also heard about the pepper spray, which is um, the vestrius bronchoconstrictus. In other words, that would have prevented the children from um, absorbing or inhaling enough oxygen. Um, but to come back to the presence of um, methanol or wood alcohol, um, I've also heard that the the, the batch of kids or the 21 kids were all smoking from an argilla, which is one of these bubble pipes, and they use um, like a little tinder block made out of um, activated charcoal or, or mm. carbon. And um, if you burn that, it will produce uh, methanol very, in very small quantities. And if you burn any tobacco product for that matter or any wood, you will, in, you will inhale a bit of methanol. The question is what was the level or the concentration of the metal, methanol in the kid's bloodstream. And that will tell us whether methanol was the cause of the mechanism. Now, I don't believe that because um, even if it was methanol and methanol was the cause of death, it would have taken quite a long time for them to die because you get a, a range of events happening. First of all, there's a bit of dizziness, like with any type of alcohol. And then there's um, a sort of sudden onset of very poor vision and then the onset of blindness. And if they ingest a low level or a low concentration of the methanol, there's um, possible permanent blindness, but if they consume more than 40 mole of methanol per child, it will kill the child. But that would have happened over a much, much longer period of time, possibly over a couple of hours or even a couple of days. So I think the presence of the methanol, it's good that it was detected, but it doesn't seem to need to be the cause of the death. And I think it's a it's a cluster of possible mechanisms that um, compounded into one point where it became too much for the children. In other words, there might have been a bit of carbon monoxide. I believe there was certainly an overload of carbon dioxide. There was oxygen deprivation. They, they were sprayed with capsicum oil, which caused them to breathe with difficulty. They smoked from an argilla pipe, and who knows what was in that argilla pipe. It might have been some narcotics that they haven't been able to detect. So... It still remains a mystery, but I do hope that the authorities will continue with their investigation and eventually provide the community, and especially the parents and the family who lost their loved children, a clear answer at some stage or another. The, the officials have said that they're still waiting for uh, further results, that uh, some of it will, uh, of course, continue to study some of the tissue they uh, collected from the youngsters. But, you know, when, when you look at what we already have on, on the record, is it likely that they'll discover something new that hasn't already been ruled out? Yes, I think it's, it's very likely. In... In forensic toxicology like this, you always have to keep an open mind. And until you come to the real indisputable evidence and answer, you don't close your mind about this. So I think they're on the right path. They definitely have to do some more testing. They've got to test for narcotics. They've got to test for whatever they test for um, to find whatever caused the, the death of the children because there is no conclusive evidence at this stage that it was actually the methanol which... Um, it could have been, but it doesn't gel with the um, circumstantial evidence to me, at least. And um, we also don't get a real good idea whether it was definitely only the oxygen deprivation. So, therefore, I believe they've got to start digging and do some more analyses on different tissue samples like blood and lungs and so on and hopefully come up with a better answer within a couple of days. How much longer do you think it's going to take to be able to get to the bottom 
of 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 these questions. Um, the good thing is that when they start the analysis, um, they've done the, the preparation of all the tissue samples. They've done extraction of whatever chemicals they would have been looking for, for narcotics or different types of alcohols or whatever the suspicious um, substances were. So once they got the extraction done, it's a case of putting everything through all the different types of technologies like GCMS and LCMS and LCMS, MS and all those types of techniques that test them. So I do believe that within 7 to 10 days, we should get as a community to get a better answer out of authorities because um, they've done the base work already. If they only started now by extracting, we would have waited another month, but at least they've got the job going, they've mm. got a good evidence that it wasn't carbon monoxide, they ruled out normal ethanol, which I am still a bit skeptical about, um, but they did find the wood alcohol and methanol. So there's, a, there's a, a path that shows that they are on the right pathway, and I would support them in going down to the real bottom and finding out what killed the children, because I do suspect that there might have been some other substances involved in this mm. whole unfortunate event. When you talk about other substances, is it a case of officials trying uh, to see or ascertain what drugs may be doing the rounds in an area like Scenery Park and, and perhaps whittling down that list? Yeah, look, the... The forensic department will always look at the circumstantial evidence. They would be interviewing people to see what was available on that particular night in that that particular shabin and what with kids that have been exposed. We know there was alcohol. We know there was smoking. There might have been a bit of cannabis. There might there was pepper spray. There there might have been some narcotics, unidentified narcotics. The problem is that we see so many new narcotics coming into the market and new concoctions that they would have to find the circumstantial evidence and then go back to the samples they've extracted from the children and put them through all the technology and find out whether they can detect any one of the known drugs or any one of the unknown drugs. In other words, most of the drugs can be detected with a GCMS or an LCMS machine because they are mostly alkaloidal of nature, except for cannabinol, which is not an alkaloid, but they are quite easy to, to detect. And with a good machine and good scientist and um, organic chemist, somebody like myself. So we look at the mass spectrum of a total unknown compound, and from that we can determine what the compound's formula looks like or what the structure of the compound looks like. So I think with a team of specialists that got on board, they should be able to give a solid answer within a couple of days. All right. Toxicologist uh, Dr. Gerard Fordun, let me thank you for your insights there tonight. Now, of course,